Well, we're going to start, even though we have guys talking still. No, we're good. Guys, Jeremy LaFrance with Backstage Entertainment. We are sitting here with all of the members of Tantric. Guys, how you doing today? Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty here. good. Yeah. You guys are Council Bluffs, Iowa, in the nice cold weather here at Whiskey Roadhouse. Yeah, yeah we're exactly. Council Bluffs, Iowa, you guys are at. So, uh, coldest night of the tour so far. What do you guys think? Probably tonight it's going to be. Uh, yeah, well, we started on the East Coast, and it was uh, we started in Florida, so we're definitely moving towards the colder part of the country. But uh, luckily we have nice warm hotel rooms, and uh, we don't really uh, have to experience the cold. We, yeah. we luckly don't load in our own gear. It forces, <laughs> Travel in space suits it forces us to sleep. <laughs> I, it forces us to sleep together in the same bed. I don't know <laughs> what he's talking about. That's right. Next Cuddle under a sleeping bag. And it's we all get the blankets yep. like this. That's right. That's right. That's all by choice. That's <laughs> nothing to do with it. Yeah. And showers just to save time, you know. We're just oh, yeah. shower. <laughs> We're environmental right. friendly. So Tantric okay, is environmental I'm gonna, friendly. I'm shields down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Talk about, you guys have been around for a little while now. What have been some struggles you guys have encountered in the music industry itself? Because a lot of the upcoming bands now, they say it's hard to get started, but what are struggles you guys have come across? We're all fighting the man. Yeah. We're well, all fighting the man. I think that uh, there's a, a benefit to have to be a band that's been around for over a decade. I mean, obviously our name is known, but the struggles that we face are are equal to the struggles I guess any band of our caliber and and I guess our popularity is, is experiencing, and it's just basically trying to adapt you know, how music is getting distributed and sold and just in general how to make a living at it, you know, a decent living, you know. Um, of course, there's those bands like ACDC that sells 1.4 million records <coughs> of a record they released like 20 years ago. Yeah. We're not one of those bands. We, we have to fight for every record that we sell and, and we have to win over every fan one by one. Um, but luckily, again, we do have the fan base that's been created over a decade of us playing together. And, and uh, I think we're, we'll be together for another 10 years as long as people keep on coming up. I mean, we've survived everything that pretty much can be thrown at a band. I mean, from labels, uh, you know, screwing us over to not getting paid to, <laughs> to, I mean, every single thing that we've, when they do the, the behind the scenes story on us, they're going to need to divide it into five or six parts because <laughs> it's, it's but almost we're comical. On every checklist. But we, we but it, every little yeah. thing you could but, think of. But you know, not to be content. cheesy, but what doesn't kill you does make you stronger. If you guys could put, you know, just like in a sentence or two, uh, the main message you guys have in the majority of your songs, what do you think it would be? I think it's that. I mean, I I write mostly all the lyrics, and I, they're really autobiographical. Don't and, trust chicks. And uh, <laughs> and, so and, and they're really they're 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 autobiographical in a big sense, and they're observational in another sense. You know, so basically, I think they're just reflections of experiences that we have or we see other people have. Right. Right. Now, how about for those fans? that are hearing you guys for the first time. Top two or three songs you want them to listen to first to really get the Tantric name, you know, kind of well known for them. Well, I, I think that Down and Out is probably the easiest representation of what this incarnation of this band is right now. But um, this band has got a really huge variety of colors. But I, I would say if you listen to Down and Out and you would listen to uh, breakdown and then uh, you know something like passes the past you know or something like walk away that's a little more left field it everything in between is what we are you know from super heavy to super you know uh, plush and you know right. and uh, not plush lush is it lush? Plush is cool too. Plush. You can use plush. No, I'm not. Plush sounds cooler. Plush. You know, sounds cool. Like just full and a lot of strings. I mean, we have a violin. Fuller than lush. We have a violin player that goes from the violin actually being its classic sense, which is a pad of strings and, you know, really lush, to it being a totally abrasive we instrument. Have a violin player? Yeah. He's, here, yeah, he's a lush. <laughs> he's a lush. He's, well, he's the lush. The lush. <laughs> I like it. So with the by and the violin, we have a luscious, yeah. luscious sound. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Lush was the better word. Luscious, lush. luscious sound. Right? And I'm going to kind of do this a little differently. What I forgot to do in the beginning of the interview is introduce everybody yeah. and what they do I, in the band. So let's how uh, this would be nice. In the middle of the interview, you guys will introduce yourselves. How about that? We'll start That's, down here. 
Huh? Richie is the drummer. See, he, I, just, he, I like to tell him he, that. He, he, just tell, ask Hugo what to, yeah. to like. I'll just get my brain like this right now. Now Hugo. Hi, my name is Richie, Richie. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm the, the dr drummer. Uh, <laughs> drummer. Exactly. That's why only certain people normally do interviews. Hi, uh, hi, my name is R Richie, and <laughs> I'm the drummer. What's that in thing. there? Okay, no chance. <laughs> All right, I'm Hugo. This is I'm the singer and uh, Marcus, Marcus. Play the violin and stuff. I'm yeah. not Marcus. I'm Joe. He wishes he was though. Yeah. <laughs> but he plays one on TV. Nobody <laughs> could be Marcus Joe. That's just asking too much. Wow. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got Joe. Joe, so we get, what are you doing oh, the band? Yeah. What do you do? Guitar player. All right. I'm Luis. I play bass and sing sometimes. Okay, so like I said, in the middle of the interview, you're finally finding out who we're actually interviewing. <laughs> what would you guys say? I mean, you guys have uh, your newest albums out, Mind Control. Um, for the fans out there, what, what would you say is different from this album versus other ones? Like a key point. There's a scary mask on the cover. There's a scary mask on the cover? Yeah, yeah. Holy yeah. Fuck. I mean, answer a question. We're walking no, I, I, you again. I think somewhat seriously. Yeah, no, I would, yeah. Say, I, would, I would say one of the big things right now and, and believe me, Marcus didn't pay me 10 bucks to say this, is, is just how we're developing. A, a big part of my control is developing the next step of uh, integrating the violin because Marcus was a lot more uh, organic on, on M Begins, you know what I mean? And, and, uh, but since day one, he's been ripping off my pedals and amps and stuff like that and just going for kind of a bit more of a guitar player well, I, and I also think that this this record in particular was just in generally a heavier record for us, right. and I think Marcus Marcus's and the use of the violin was different in this record. Not only just because we purposely, consciously wanted to, to explore that sound, uh, but also because Mark would. Uh, you know, made Marcus a few custom violins that have seven strings that give them, it just gave us a whole different, you know, palette of colors, you know, to pick from and sounds and a, a bigger range. So that in itself is like, you know, just having more colors to, to pick from when, when painting a, pi a picture, you know. Um, and obviously having, you know, Richie on the record was a, a great benefit to us too, because a lot of the, the demos that I made, I made on a drum machine, and you know, a lot of drummers couldn't even duplicate them because they were very, you know, technical. And and he would he would take the best aspects of so it. No, and then in other words, I did what he told me to do. No, he would take the best. I mean, for example, on Walk Away, he would take the best a aspects of what ideas I had, and then or uh, like that's make a really cool organic. idea what you did. I'm gonna do exactly that, <laughs> and then make it better. No, no. That's all good. All right, so you're doing what you're told. That's just. Um, I'm trying. No, to, I'm just trying I to. Never tell them what trying to do. equalize the firebirds, and also, I think of it like my socks. You know how you have like these red socks right here. <laughs> Somehow, like you know, you get like holes in your socks. I think I got like a hole in one of these socks, but it doesn't really matter. There it is. Like, oh, man. see, that's funk. I mean, like you think about like the record. It's kind of like it's dark. It's like the red sock, but at the same time, you know, it's grungy and it's like very. Anyway, so, yeah. we. We love him, and, and just for a dollar a day, a cup it's of like a pop. funky old sock with holes in it. I mean, you can't you can't write this, you can't That's figure rough. this out. You know, you can get new socks, but you can't make your socks look like that unless you're like us. I don't even know what that meant, but it was deep. That was deep. It takes a, this is a lot of running here. It's a lot of running, a lot of yeah, a lot, a lot of transfer. Throw. Transportation. All right. Running in airports. Moving on to the next question. Moving on. Moving on. That's right. All right. Like I mentioned before the interview, we are going to go to. I'm going to walk in front of you again. We're going far away. That's right. <laughs> we'll see you later. All right. No, we have our BSC box, which fans have found us on Facebook. You guys can go like Backstage Entertainment and submit questions into our BSC box. What we're going to do is, you guys are going to draw one question. If you guys have answers to other questions, you can blurt them out, but uh, you'll draw your own questions here. All right. Right. New guy first. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. A new car! <laughs> Everybody gets a car. Look under your seat. <laughs> wow. Uh, where did you get your start? Well, uh, from my mother's womb. That's where I got my start, basically. <laughs> All right, good one. Okay, here there we you go. go. Thank he'd, you. He'd like to thank his mother and father yes. for making it possible. Thank you. And thank you, yes. Okay, great. Okay, okay Joe. Okay, Do I get to keep the question? You can keep it. I get to keep the question. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> 
That's awesome. <laughs> you know, if we take all of all of our first names, it's like a fortune. Marcus, it, it is. Like Would you get good Chinese? My uh, yeah, my lucky numbers to play tonight. <laughs> all right. What is your most embarrassing moment on tour or on stage? Oh. Embarrassing moment here. Most embarrassing moment. Oh, uh, yours in particular or the band? <laughs> oh boy. Could be either. I don't know. Funniest story. Give us the funniest oh moment. Oh my god. About. You know Marcus That's... is going to be involved in it. Yeah. You got to tell him about the friggin'. Oh my god. That one's pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. Just get your eye poked out. His <clears throat> bow was pretty awesome. Yeah. I can tell him one that. When, when, yeah, when Marcus gets worked up in a lather towards the end of the set and everything like that, he's almost poked me in the eye a few times. Really? But but Marcus has lived those moments more than I have. I'm <laughs> yeah, merely a spectator. I mean, I, I can tell you one uh, embarrassing moment that happened in a different incarnation so that nobody here becomes a victim. But this was a really funny. I was playing an old VFW. I'll never forget it. There was a drum riser, and like the stage was an old stage building, had been there for about a hundred years. And when we went over there and we were sound checking, the owner of the building was putting these X's, and I was like, "What are those X's for?" He's like, "Oh, those are just weak parts in the wood, you know. So just be careful." And this place, this stage is about yay high, you know. Yep. So. You know, we're playing, you know, and I kind of put it in the back of my head, you know, and at one point I actually jumped off the drum riser and went right through the stage, <clears throat> like straight through, like and the curtain had closed up and we had shut down the music and there was like splinters in my arm and the whole nine yards. And you just hear in the background, just like, like power tools of them trying to cut me out. Because I was like literally stuck with a microphone. That's like the right like round and round video, right? That's the round it was crazy. Um, anyways, yeah. fast forward 45 minutes, you know, they, they got like another piece of plywood over it. You know, I've got some flesh wounds, you know, I'm all taped up and we come back out and we finish the set. That was pretty embarrassing, probably. I had injuries. I got yeah. cut, remember I had to go to the emergency room? Yeah. I got cut by his drum, my his cymbal. Yeah, really? I, was, I was just jumping up on the drum riser and I sliced my head and I was bleeding all over like real bad. And I, right. I kept playing, right? And at the end of the show, like they were like, you know you when you cut yourself, like in your, first of all, he's sweating, right? And he's really, his heart rate's up. But you know when you cut yourself, sometimes it just bleeds profusely. I mean, yeah, was, it was bleeding so fast and so quickly. And about one minute, he looked like his whole face was covered. It was really and crazy. And we're all looking at each other going, oh my God, what are you doing? He's well, like, what? What's the big deal? What's the big deal? And he it probably had a few drinks already, which made his blood really thin. I wasn't going to say that, yeah. But the thing is, is it looks so rock we didn't stop the song yeah, yeah, yeah. that was pretty rock I was like, keep going this looks awesome people then, were snapping fingers <laughs> then he had like a speech he couldn't even remember he was talking <laughs> he just started talking about like equal uh, like it made absolutely no sense like quadraphonic toplings meets like the yeah like car cardboard oil oil like you know like cheeses and different like start talking about yeah the other people things. that i care about that, i don't know yeah, that was a short part of the conversation <laughs> yeah you're like me the end Okay, next question. That's right, next question. Man, this is a loaded box. Right. All right. Oh, God. Oh, okay. What's one thing you miss from before you started touring? What? Mm -hmm. yep. what, what do you miss? What do I miss? Yeah. Before touring. Oh, like, like before in general tour? or like when I first started touring? Like any tour? I don't know. That question is written it's grammatically. Written like grammatically kind touring. of crazy. Yeah, like before you joined the band, what oh. did you miss? Of your normal missed. life. I missed uh, Mater D's holding silver platters of hors d'oeuvres after our concert. Yeah. Well, champagne. it used to be in a... Let me explain <laughs> that, because Marcus was a concert violinist for most of his career. So, uh, needless to say that his different. playing experiences were... And his backstage and whatever was completely different. And yeah. Now we have Mater D's holding shots of tequila. <laughs> when before they used to have like, like you know, champagne and raspberries, uh, and I didn't have to sign any risks. Yeah. No, I do. It's just a shame. <laughs> Anyways, next question. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to make this painful. Uh, hope we get a crazy one. We got some All right. Good. What's the biggest opportunity? What's your? What has been your biggest opportunity being in the band? <laughs> um, I I don't even know if that's a good question. Let's just pull another one. <laughs> here. He gets to do I two. Mean, I, think I mean, it's like, it. what's the biggest opportunity? The biggest opportunity thing. is, you know, playing. That's what we do. That's not really. Oh. Here's a good one. What has been your worst food experience? Okay, I've got one for this. Okay, good. Here, here's here's a little tad bit of knowledge. 
don't go to Hooters and get oysters, okay? Because generally, if you're getting two dozen oysters for like 12 bucks, it's because they probably aren't the best quality. And I remember I was in Nashville and I had- Probably let the girls pick out the oysters. I had to, I had to do like, we were doing a video shoot and uh, I had gone to Hooters and I'm a big fan of oysters and, you know, pounded down a couple of dozen oysters and like three hours later my face was just like I, I looked like the blob and I'm not even allergic to oysters at all I mean I eat them all the time and I think uh, there's the cutest girls who and I literally <laughs> had like purple spots all over my body and I'm supposed to like you, you know doing a, a shot uh, you know we were supposed to start, uh, start shooting this video three hours and you know say it cost cost at uh, the record label at the time a lot of money because they had to postpone everything and shut down because my face who the hell is tantric no anyway i mean he kept talking okay. about tantric hey, why don't you grab a question there bubba he's <laughs> an angry hooters fan <laughs> all right guys <laughs> <laughs> hey that's hugo from tantric let's do something into his oysters okay well, it was actually my first record, oh, so. Yeah, kind of along the same lines here. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah, look at this. What is your favorite place to eat while on the road touring? Hooters? From his pocket. <laughs> you know what's funny? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Probably from my pocket, but ask these guys. I, I'm kind of a snob with food and cheeses and things like that. It has to be a certain kind of, right. like, you know, the bread has to be, you know, folded a certain way. I mean, Marcus, you could take it from here. Like, <laughs> I mean, my, I should say the text, the, 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 everybody hates me when it comes to getting food on the rider. Well, I, you ever see the movie Napoleon Dynamite? He's got the tater tots in his pocket. Oh, yeah. yeah, Richie will have, like, wings and pizza. That's in his not, <laughs> but, hey, that's not always a bad thing because, like, if I'm really starving, I know I can reach yes. in there and there's probably they a T-bone come back steak to me. fully ready to go. Yo, Rich, yo, with buddy. A platter. Hey, man, can I get some, you got some of the it's wings like, left? It's yeah. like, who is that cartoon character that always kept all the stuff in his hair? Oh, the hamburger guy from Popeye? No. No, man. Oh. You know, the guy who just had fur all over and you know, pulled out stuff. Basically, he, his pocket is like the Doctor Who of, of <laughs> But lately, I pull out like a like, good Mexi Mel burrito, and everyone's like, dude, I'll take that. Everybody, yeah. It's starting yeah. to get him upping like, it now. Especially yeah. when you're doing like six interviews right at dinner time. Exactly. Like, Hugo just got a hamburger right before when I still got that yeah. somewhere over here. Yeah, the hamburger. Yeah, well, let's see. What are you, what are we we got, he got us a hamburger. Right uh, I, can't, I can't disclose what's in my, my pockets right now. Sweet talk to my I have a rocket that's in my pocket. Awesome. <laughs> Everybody can check out Tantric Mind Control out in stores now. See you guys on tour some more here and finish out the year. Yeah. Ages. Yeah. What's coming up for Tantric coming up in 2012? Uh, we, right now we, we're sifting through about 60 songs that we have written and we, our intention is to have a new single out available uh, out on the radio and available in the next the beginning of the next year and, and followed by an LP right after that yeah all right and uh, just check out our Facebook uh, yeah. facebook.com backslash tantric and uh, from there you can go to all our other sites there you go guys once again the guys of tantric check them out <laughs> hey everyone make sure to like backstage entertainment on Facebook to see our photos to enter yourself into contests for autograph prizes and other news also, make sure to click the subscribe button on YouTube to check out the rest of our videos. And you can find us on Twitter to get updates about what we're doing. For Backstage Entertainment, this is Jeremy LaFrance. We'll probably just do, since we got all of you, we'll have each one of you pick a question. We'll just go down the line. <laughs> you can answer it. If you guys have answers to other questions, you can do that as well. Okay. I'll kind of do a Are the questions to... all related to the band? <laughs> They're in general questions. No, I'm just wondering, only yes. for the fact that if Louise grabs a question... And then we're doing it one. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do it in mine. It's, 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 like, it's just improvised, you know, when it comes to you. It's like, when I wrote Breakdown. Yeah. Just <laughs> take the jazz approach here. Yeah, just have fun with, just have fun with it. Don't worry, don't yeah. be serious. Don't yeah. bullshit. Yeah. And I may, I may keep standing so that way I can kind of pass the mic and whoever's answer, I may give it to you or just stand by it, whatever. So. You mind if I twirl it to like a couple of visual things? Can we have a wall right here so I can say, Bachelor number three. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Have fun. Order, if I was an ice cream, how would you eat? Yeah. <laughs> Joe had a disclaimer with his thing. Like, Joe was not associated with us. Uh, the same you know what I'm they always ask that stupid question. <laughs> if I was an ice cream, <laughs> I'd eat you really fast so you wouldn't melt. <laughs> 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 Not by, shared by Joseph. Joseph <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shared by the rest of the <laughs> right. You can see the feelings expressed. Okay. <laughs> no, you, you guys, good. Have fun during the interview. Definitely. Okay. So. Joe's wife has watched this. He's not with no, this is. Right. Are you kidding me? They're this is. Right. Yep. This is totally we do have a blooper reel at the end. So.